Welcome to another one of our inspiring journeys where we explore the paths that dynamic and aspirational people have taken, putting into reality grit and resilience. Today, the first woman to chair the State Bank of India shares with us the lessons of her life and work from over 30 years in her career. Really delighted to be here with chair and CEO of Salesforce India, Arundhati Bhattacharya. Great to see you again. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. Sorry, this had to be in a virtual mode. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is the only way it could be managed. And thank you very much for having me on your platform. At some point, we will meet in person because the last time I spoke to you it was virtual as well. Now, you have a new book out uh, and it's receiving rave reviews. I want to talk about that with you. The name is Indomitable. Why did you choose that name? Well, uh, basically, I think every single woman who is uh, managing a career and a uh, family, both, uh, all of them need to be indomitable in some way or the other. Uh, there are so many roadblocks that come on your way. There are so many perceptions that you need to battle. There are so many uh, decisions that you need to take for which you never will know whether they are the right or the wrong decisions. And uh, doing that needs a lot of grit and determination. So you have to be indomitable if you really want to get ahead. That's the only way that this sort of thing uh, can work. And uh, there, there is no point in faltering. You just have to forge ahead. You have to hang in there. And that's why I thought uh, this title sounded good. As you mentioned, it's really about that seesaw between private life and the working life, which is something that every working woman, in fact, every person uh, faces. But let's start with your working life and talk about your early career at the State Bank of India. The book details, and I'm not kidding, fighting with snakes uh, in some of the rural bank branches, repairing fuse boxes, and a pretty challenging schedule. 4 a.m., visiting far from branches, returning at 2 a.m. Tell me a little about what you learned from those days. Well, one thing, of course, is that you have to be very resilient. You have to be very resilient. You have to be very adaptable. And uh, you basically need to lead from the front. Uh, those were branches that taught me a lot about, you know, management, about how one leads, about how to inspire people and more than anything else to empathize with others who may be going through same, similar issues and to be supportive of them. Uh, it also taught me how to make other people successes so that, you know, you would not be bearing the entire burden, but that, you know, you could have your team performing alongside of you at the same pace so that ultimately, you know, together we could succeed. So those were very uh, hard taught but well-taught lessons that I received. And I think, you know, at the end of it all, you know, the journey was just as rewarding. It was just as much fun. Many of those people that I worked with in those branches, they have stayed with me through my life. They have wished me before every single promotion interview, they followed my career and they have wished me well whenever, you know, I was having a setback or, you know, there were issues that I needed to attend to. They've been there beside me. So I think, you know, in a way, uh, it's been a, a very deep learning experience, but also it's been very rewarding. This book, in fact, you detail early how you learned how to reject what you called unwanted attention from over-enthusiastic male colleagues. What was your strategy? Well, my strategy, of course, was very simple in those days that I would uh, talk glowingly of family and, you know, what we did together and how, uh, you know, content I was in uh, the situation that I was in. And uh, yes, you know, there are ways and ways of doing this, but you need to get out of such situations in as graceful a manner as possible, but also in as firm a manner as possible. In those days, awareness about these issues was very low. The Vish Vishaka Act, which has changed things drastically, in India hadn't, hadn't been enacted. And you really need to, needed to take care of yourself. But having said that, I must also say that I had a lot of male colleagues who were allies, allies in this battle as well, who also looked after me. There were times, you know, when I was at the branch and 
nobody else was around and they would take it in turns to uh, stay with me till such time as I was going home and without claiming overtime, which they rightfully could. So I think there is a good and a bad to every uh, side of it. And there's no point in only highlighting the bad pieces of it. The good pieces also need to be highlighted. So I had uh, both, as you say, you know, mentors and tormentors, both were available. But yes, you needed to learn with learn to deal with all of these things in as firm a manner as possible and lay down where the barriers were, where things ended and, you know, to what extent uh, they could take uh, liberties and to what extent I would allow that. But, um, some challenges in your personal life, finding a school for your daughter, your mother was uh, aging. In fact, I think in, in the States, I remember we, we call this the sandwich generation, when you've got both sides uh, of your family to think about. Can you give us a little of the flavor of that? Well, uh, yeah, you know, this is something that, again, you know, at least in India, I do not know across the world if this is true, but in India, the woman is considered to be the primary caregiver. And uh, while I was in charge of um, uh, HR in the bank for a period of around, say, two years, one of the things I had done was, you know, take an informal survey as to when was the leakage happening in the pipe, because we were getting about 33% of women at the entry stage, but only 4% of them needed to the senior management. And obviously, the organization was looking, losing out a lot in talent and in productivity by losing these women. And I found that in India, at least, you know, there were three phases where women would step up. One, of course, was, you know, when the, the childbearing years, which is true across the globe. But in India also, though, there were the years between the classes of 10 and 12, where uh, things are very common, where your child is between the classes of 10 and 12, because uh, the child is expected to compete in various examinations in order to get a good placement in college. And that is a period when the child needs a lot of attention. They need to be chauffeured around to the various coaching classes. They have to have the right nutrition, the right amount of sleep. And the mother is expected to be around to do it. And many uh, a woman would feel guilty if they weren't around to do the same and the child still didn't make it. Uh, so to a, a large extent, this was another period when uh, women felt you know, that they needed to leave and take care of the children. And the third was, of course, geriatric care, you know, elderly care is not all that easily available in India. Even if you have people attending to them at home, you don't feel like leaving um, your elderly relatives back at home because you owe so much to them and you want to be around, you know, in the, their last days. And uh, that is something, again, that made a lot of women feel guilty about either shortchanging work or home and they would make a choice and mostly it would be home. So, you know, by providing a two-year sabbatical, I tried to balance this. And this was meant for child as well as elderly care, which I don't think is available in most cases. It's mostly child care that is available. But I think it did save a number of careers. I have had people coming and telling me that, you know, because uh, I needed to take off and I took off for a year, but actually I needed it only for three months. So my career is unaffected and I'm back at work. And I think that made a big difference. It makes a big difference for women to feel supported during such periods when you need to make that difficult decision as to which way you should be going. Now, especially with you know, the remote working made possible and proven by the pandemic to work just as well, these women should be further supported to ensure that they don't miss out on years of their career. They don't miss out on the seniority levels they continue to work at jobs which will allow remote working and yet allow them to be at home during that period when they need to be at home. Thank you so much. I'm really aware of your time uh, and the fact that we've run out of it. So we want to thank you very much for joining us. I want to wish you personally a happy International Women's Day. And I look forward to the point where we can meet in person. Sure. I look forward to it too. And a happy International Women's Day to your entire audience, male or female. We need them all in order to make a better, more balanced world. Thank you so much. Much. And to our audience here, we'll be back in just 15 minutes. Uh, we're going to have a networking break. And after that, we'll be taking a look at our Global Disruptor series with Global Bees. See you then.